Hey, it's, hey. It's your girl, Lena Elkins here, and our friend, Arnie Giske. What's up, what's up? How's How everybody doing? Is this? this is so fun. So, I'm sure a lot of you guys know already, because we've both been talking about it in our groups. Arnie is hanging out with me here in the Bay Area for the past weekish now and it has been super fun and it's super cool out look yeah, at this sure. i'm sure you guys have seen this view already but it's pretty sweet yeah already we get it <laughs> <laughs> that's all they see that's all they see they're like okay whatever um but yeah so we're super excited to be hanging out we've been doing lots of fun stuff chilled in san francisco yesterday and tonight we are having a meetup that you're all invited to but we'll give you guys all the deeds at the end of this video once you hop on say what's up say hi and yay i think that was Ernest. somebody's actually. on I oh you saw the profile picture? i think i saw the profile picture well yeah. drop, drop a comment when you guys come on so we know who's here Woohoo, okay Ernest. Yeah. sweet <coughs> So we are hanging out today and Arnie and I really wanted to make the, a video together. We were brainstorming topics and then we both realized something that I think a lot of you guys just need to hear right now. So we are going to be talking about how when you're a pretty early, okay, Ernest, calm down. We appreciate it, <laughs> but you know, uh, no, just joking. Keep, keep them coming. It's fine. Um, so we were talking about how difficult it is when you're first getting started, you know, still in the beginning stages of having a business, how hard it can be to really lock in the necessary confidence that you need in order to grow. And then how do you actually monetize um, on that confidence? And there's nobody who knows more about that than our friend Arnie. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got some exciting stuff for you guys. And uh, like everybody else, I want to remind you guys. Um, I started from somewhere too. I didn't just come out having a 30,000 person Facebook group and a six figure business. That just doesn't happen. So no matter where you guys are at, um, there is a path to get there. And the things you need the most to get there is confidence and money. So that's where we're going to talk about how you guys can get that and using social media to get that. So I'm super excited to kind of dive into the, the, the story of it a little bit. And uh, if you, if you want to lead with some questions, go for it. We can yeah, that would be awesome. First, I want to say, as you were explaining that, did you see what happened? It was like, you have a PayPal notification for getting this money. Follow, guys. Come Boom. On. Come on. That's the goal, right? Love That's it. what we want. Just be chatting and get PayPal notifications <laughs> and you made money. So, yeah. So, before we get into your That's past... That's real life, that, That's real life. That just happened <laughs> IRL. Um, so, I'm sure that most people here already know who you are, but just give us the elevator pitch. Who are you? What do you do? What's your, your thing? For sure. So uh, I'm Arnie Giske. I run the Millennial Entrepreneur Community. We are about 31,000 members strong. We just Ooh. hit the 31 mark today. And uh, I've right. had that community for just about 15 months. Started from zero. And we've really gone super exponential. Uh, as I kind of blew up the online presence, I figured out how to turn that into real dollars in the bank and real impact and grow a team and, and travel the world. I'll have 10 countries and about a dozen states on the map for 2017. So I'm pretty much full-time nomad. I love it. I love the lifestyle. I love building the business. And uh, I love teaching other people what actually goes into making that happen. So um, if you guys are interested in, in scaling a business or traveling, becoming a digital nomad, whether you're watching now or on the replay, uh, let me know in the comments and let me know your first ideal travel destination too and we might just be there so we can hang out when you make it happen <laughs> that would be so 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 cool i know i think obviously that's a big focus in a lot of groups right now but everybody in this group recently has been talking about how to actually make the digital nomad life come to life so mm -hmm. you are the perfect example of that so going back i mean it's not like you've been doing this for 20 years <laughs> right like past few years i mean so much can happen in just a oh, few yeah. years which i think a lot of people also don't realize is how quickly you can actually scale your influence and your income with your online business but let's take it back a few years tell us where did you start and when did what was your kind of hate to sound like jld but what was your aha moment like you know what was your your tipping point the point yeah yeah direction? great question so um i really got started out in online business um about two and a half years ago was when i kind of showed up on the scene uh, I didn't really jump in and take action and actually make money with it until about, I want to say almost nine, nine months after I started like looking at things and, and soaking up all the free content and all the resources. Patience, um, guys. Yeah. It takes time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I wasn't taking the action. So that was my biggest mistake was I was reading all the articles, I was listening to the webinars, I was taking all the training, but I didn't really have anything materialized for the longest time. Um, and it was November 2015 when I said, all right, I'm going to start uh, start my agency out. 
and I actually started helping another friend of mine with sales. I had a more of a sales background, he was a developer, so we linked up and uh, that was the goal. Get some deals done, I get a commission, he does the project, we keep going about our days. And uh, it took me a full three months to get my very first sale in and it ended up being a $15,000 mobile app project. So that just completely blew my mind. It opened my eyes to the possibilities of what can happen with online business. This is me with working with somebody in, in South Carolina as a partner and, and somebody in Boston as the client. Never met both of them, $15,000 deal. So I was like, holy shit, this is real. Like there is opportunity out there. So I knew that I could continue to get it going, keep scaling, keep taking that action and, and making it happen. Um, so I just had to keep developing and learning more skills and learning how to really run the business um, and, and finally turn that into what I do today. Um, as, as I was kind of growing and scaling up, I, I started a Facebook group. I actually started five Facebook groups. Four of them totally failed, flopped, they're dead and gone. Um, and, and the fifth one I knew I didn't want to give up on. So that is the Millennial Entrepreneur Community um, that I've built 31,000 members in the last 15 months without paying for ads. And uh, I really figured out around even the 5,000 member mark that I had a unique ability with Facebook groups because I took a look at what was working, what wasn't working, implemented it, and, and was running a highly engaged group. And other people wanted that, so that's when I started teaching it to others. And like Ernest said, he grew his group to 1,000 members uh, with just some of the info from me. And he's not even in my course. He got, he got my, my free group girl cheat sheet. Called and, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see you, Ernest. Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> you want that next level yeah. stuff, man? <laughs> you know where to find it. But you guys can get tons of results. And um, what I want to really help you guys with today is understanding how you can earn confidence, how you can kind of keep that confidence, and then use that confidence to skyrocket your results in your business and and get more sales and really kind of monetize that confidence. So definitely excited to chat on that. Awesome. Before we jump in to that, I just want to say, so you said that you first started four groups before this one was successful. Yeah. <laughs> For the people who are new in this group who, or who just started their own groups, what do you think were some of the big reasons that those four groups failed? Um, being selfish. I How think so? like, like one of them was called uh, business bloggers mm -hmm. and all I did was post my own blog links. <laughs> So you used it as like a Twitter feed, basically? You used it as a Twitter feed. Okay. And I just talked about my own self. I never built relationships. I just showed up and I wrote something new and then I would just post a link. First up, Facebook hates links. They want you to stay in Facebook and enjoy the content in Facebook. Mm -hmm. So do as many native posts. If you want to share an article on Facebook, copy and paste the text and put it on Facebook. If you want to share a YouTube video, download the video and upload it to Facebook. Keep people on Facebook mm -hmm. and Facebook will give you brownie points and more reach, more engagement, more results. And uh, you're going to be saying the same thing whether it's on a blog or on YouTube than just putting it in, in natively in Facebook. So you might as well do that. Sweet. That completely makes sense. So going back to where you were when you first got started, I mean, I think for most people, confidence is a huge issue. Um, at the same time, ironically, people tend to kind of brush mindset stuff to the side. Mm -hmm. um, as in, you know, it's not the tangibles, it's not the step-by-step, -step. I need to know exactly what it takes to build a business, when really, I think that your mindset and your confidence is, has to be the foundation for all of that. Yep. So where were you when you first got started uh, confidence-wise, and what were some of the things that you did to really you know, get through that block and yeah. use it to succeed? Great question. Uh, so first up, I was really bullish on confidence because I was really ignorant. <laughs> so this is before I got slapped with a ton of failure and slapped with the hard times. I just came on the scene like, all right, I got some sales experience. I can go find clients and sell stuff. This is going to be a piece of cake. You know, I don't even have to make the apps. I'll just give it to this guy to do. I just got to talk to people. Slap, you know, <laughs> wake up call. Uh, it took me three months to get my first deal. And, and uh, the month following that, I actually had 12 consultation calls, zero deals, and I was feeling like quitting every single day. Like I wanted I to ego. throw in the towel. I was just hurting. And, and the people on the other side of the phone could hear that. You know, I, I was not happy. I was not confident. I was mm -hmm. not feeling like I was on top of my game. And I'm sure I was sounding super desperate. Mm. So 
who wants to work with a person like that, right? Who doesn't even believe in themselves. Doesn't even believe in themselves. Is like yeah. this close to quitting. Totally. So um, I really had to kind of take that slap on the face of those failures and figure out how to flip it upside down and build on it. Um, and I had a, an amazing call with somebody um, who actually just, just met up with us at this conference for the first time in person. And um, he had some more experience. He kind of helped me take a look at where the confidence was lacking and how to kind of rebuild that. So because I didn't have the confidence in myself, in my team, in my abilities, in, in my path forward, nobody else had that confidence in it either. So it really starts with kind of closing the deal with yourself. And if you can do that and you can create that confidence even before you're like 100% certain you have it, there are tricks that you guys can use to, to you know, step in the game and, and get, your, get your mindset in the right spot to have that confidence before a, a sales meeting, before a call, before an interview, whatever it is. Um, and, and we'll jump into that too. But first I wanna show you guys like, after I had that call, after I had made some tweaks to my mindset and, and how I prepared for things and how I looked at things and how I looked at the outlook of my future with the business, um, the next five calls I had, I got deals. Hmm. Boom, 12, zero for zero, next five, five for five. So that was kind of the, the monetization of the confidence there where it was like an instant result and, and that was really, really powerful um, and it was just the coolest feeling to have that I was on the right track, that I was getting the results, that I could turn that mindset shift into money. Um, so another quick note on that, if anybody of you guys are out there that teach soft skills like mindset, confidence, you gotta tie it to a tangible result yes. of that, that, that money, that client, that business growth, whatever it is. Because you can tell people how awesome your mindset changes are all day, but if you can't tell them how that's gonna make them more rich or more famous or whatever they want, mm -hmm. they're not gonna buy in. Um, so that's kind of what happened to me. That was the transition that, that helped me a lot. Um, and that confidence comes through on social media. So in a big way, like if you put out really desperate posts, like, um, Hey, does anybody want a free consult called two spots left? And then there's no engagement. It's like, Ooh, yeah. that's not a good, that's not, yeah. See, you just cringe right there. Yeah, I always, I'm like, please delete yeah. this. Yeah, please delete it. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not a good look and people can tell. So there's a lot that comes through with your messaging of how kind of desperate you are for results. But if you're sharing stuff like, my client just got this awesome result. Pretty cool, huh? Like you can just kind of like point to stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really powerful as well. So um, once you get that, you're not directly asking for people to hop on your discovery calls. You're just showing people, hey, look what I'm capable of. You want some? Come get some, you know where to find me. You know, and, and that translates to your social media, that translates to your lead generation, that translates to, to your sales. Um, so when you can kind of figure out what that tipping point is with you and your confidence, and you can have that communicated all over the place, your sales calls, your social media, all of your marketing, it's gonna make results a lot easier to get. Yeah, 100%, 100%. It ultimately ends up affecting everything. And this is exactly what I have a lot of clients who are mindset coaches and such, and I always tell them you have to paint the picture of how it's actually gonna apply yep. to someone's day-to-day -day life. Otherwise, it's just not tangible enough and people don't connect to it. So I completely agree. And I'm wondering, so when you were talking about rebuilding your own confidence, and I think it's typical for people to be like, here are three tips, and in three days you can be the most confident person <laughs> in the world. But that's obviously not how it works, right? It's an ongoing process, but I'm wondering, what are some some advice that you can share? And maybe if you could also share if there were any, you know, particular books or podcasts you were listening to at the time, or what were daily habits that you had, and what kind of content were you taking in in order to uh, grow your confidence and then put it to action? Yeah, yeah. So it was it was really cool. It was a few um, kind of guiding questions from this person that hopped on a call with me, um, followed up by the the kind of repetition of these beliefs. Um, he, you know, he was challenging me. He's saying like, do you think you should be in business? I was like, yeah. <laughs> do you think you're capable of serving these clients? Like, yeah. Like, obviously yes answers, but it's like these questions that if I had, if I'm supposed to have confidence in these answers, that translates to my man mindset towards the, the next communication, mm -hmm. you know? So I had to kind of look at all these different answers of, am I actually supposed to be doing this? Hmm. 
and I had to agree with myself, yes, I am. Yes, we are capable. Yes, we have a great team. Yes, I can help these clients. Um, so just ask yourself those questions, you know? Are you capable of helping people? Are you in the right position to, to serve them and bring value to them? Are you ready to receive that value of them paying you? Um, and, and really getting yourself in the right mindset. And then read your answers back mm. until you feel it in your bones. That, like, that was the exercise I had to do before the calls. He said, all right, before you get on these calls with people, you know, take 10, 15 minutes and read this back. You know, mm. I am ready. I am confident. I can serve these clients, blah, blah, blah. And especially when you're starting out, you don't, you don't sound like that. You don't have that confidence. You might read it like, I, I am ready. I have the confidence. You know, you're kind of just saying it. But you repeat it until you feel it in your bones. And, and you're like fired up like you're about to go hop in an NFL game and, uh, and run for that touchdown. Because once you have that feeling, once you have that confidence, and once you believe in yourself and you hop on that call, you're like, what's happening? I am ready to change your life. Mm -hmm. And you're like just fired up. You're like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna make a big impact. We're gonna make it happen. I can help you guys. Uh, we're capable. All that. So that all translates back into your communication, your tonality, um, and and people feel people feel it in their bones too. Totally. So that makes you look like somebody they really want to work with, um, and you can just keep that confidence flowing and going and and get that result. So that's kind of the exercise of. Declaring what you're capable of and declaring what what you can help people with and Saying it over and over again and being like yes, mm -hmm. I can I can help people. I really can make a difference I am worth it. Uh, I'm so worth it I probably should be charging more and mm -hmm. then and then you're ready to roll Totally, I think what a lot of people also do I mean they say it out loud to themselves But then I know a lot of you guys out here have told me you're obsessed with putting things on like post-it notes And then just putting them all over your house yeah. like everywhere you go, you know in the bathroom like everywhere in your car Everywhere so you just have these constant reminders and you yep. constantly know to check in with this message I think that that's really really huge And I also what I was thinking about before when you were talking about how awesome it is when you know Other people can just you can say well look at these results I drove for this person mm -hmm. and it just sells itself, you know, yep. but I think a lot of people um, feel like they still lack confidence even when they feel like they know that they can serve people they know that they're worth it all those things but at the end of the day they don't have the testimonials they haven't had the clients yet and I know that there are so many new coaches in this group who are just transitioning into this space how would you tell people to go about getting that social proof to getting their hands dirty with their first clients because I think that that's the hardest thing for a lot of people yeah great question so first up guys I would look for people who are already in the position to get a lot of value from what you do because if, if you try and take somebody from zero to 50, it's gonna be a whole lot harder to take them from 50 to 100. So if you see somebody who's killing it in a lot of different areas, but is lacking in the area that you could really help out with, your, what you bring to them can be a big transformational change. It can mm -hmm. solve a lot of other things and bring them bigger results. So do it for free. I know a lot of people say, you know, don't, don't go out and do everything for free, but if you are seriously lacking results and you need those testimonials, especially as, as a coach or somebody who's trying to sell information or sell their time, you need to get those good results. And if you don't have them, it's gonna be a lot harder to sell things anyways. So you might as well invest a little bit of time into really understanding how you can help somebody, changing their life, getting them a result, and then you can say, hey, here's the result. Cool thing about results and testimonials is there's no price tag, it's not like, you know, I helped this person, they paid me this much. It's like, I helped them and I did this. Here's mm -hmm. what they got. There's no price tag attached to it. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's really, really powerful to be able to do that. Um, but don't do it forever. You know, get those results and then say, all right, now, now I'm the shit. Now I'm awesome. I'm capable. I'm ready to start charging. Right, for sure. And speaking of price points, this is something else where I think people's insecurities tend to come out to the public and it's really unfortunate is when people have so little confidence in what results they're able to bring, they price themselves super, super low. And I think a lot of it just comes from not knowing what how to price themselves, not knowing what they're really worth. How do you go about discovering what you really should be charging and making sure that it's aligned with your self-confidence? I hope that this makes sense. Yeah. This is like how I'm imagining it in my mind. And then how do you really just put that into action? How do you have the confidence to say I'm worth this and put it out into the world? Um, all right, think about what you guys want to charge per hour if you are charging for your time. All right, now double it. Is that scary? 
good. Now go find somebody that is not scary for them to pay that because they're in the position to receive that value. Um, I've raised my rates like exponentially ever since I got started with consulting and some coaching mm -hmm. um, just by being like, all right, if I can solve this problem for them in an hour, what, either, what is that worth to them? You know, I used to do more stuff with sales funnels, Facebook ads, where if I could solve a problem for somebody in an hour, that could be worth uh, an extra couple thousand bucks a month for them or more. So I was like, wow, this is really cool. You know, maybe I'll just start out a hundred bucks a session. I was like, cool, sounds good. People would take me up left and right. I was like, awesome. I did not used to make this back in my job. I'm right. pretty happy. Um, and then it was like, all right, now I got a few people. I got them some good results. I can point at those results. Let's go 150. And kept rolling in, kept rolling in, kept rolling in. Because there's always people out there that are in the position to receive the value you have to bring. Um, and that's the biggest slap in the face for anybody who does any kind of value-based pricing mm -hmm. is to understand that there are more people out there. If you're getting on conversations and chats with people who can't afford you, you're getting on the calls and chats with the wrong people. Mm -hmm. It's not you. Just because they're not ready to work with you to receive the value doesn't mean it's not there. Um, I'm not ready to buy you know, a Lamborghini right now, but there's plenty of people out there that are like, hell yeah, sign me up. Mm -hmm. You have to go find those people where you get to be their Lamborghini and you get to charge top dollar for what you do and the awesome stuff you have to bring and the ride that you can take them on. <laughs> yeah, 1,000%. Maybe we should both go in on a Lamborghini yeah, together. Let's do it. That would be awesome. We'll talk about it later. We'll work out the logistics. <laughs> um, and okay, so this is uh, the last question. And if you want to add anything, you can. I'm wondering, so I know that a lot of people who are in this group, they have these awesome side hustles going on. But at the end of the day, they're still in the nine to five. And I think a lot of people have a lot of shame around admitting that. But it's the reality. Um, I know that quite a few people in my group and in Arnie's, uh, you know, are still in the nine to five. And whatever it is, there's, there's something holding them back from just going all in. What do you have to say to those people who are on the brink of doing it, um, but they are just too scared and they're just not quite sure if they can pull it off? Burn the boats. We were just talking about this yeah. yesterday, the day before. Of uh, If you want to take the island, you got to burn the boat. Mm -hmm. But if you want to just circle around the island and look at it, you're gonna need your boat. But if you wanna take that island, you wanna make that happen, you wanna make that your reality, you have to go crash on shore. You might hurt yourself, but you gotta burn the boat and hop off and, and go make that real and go take that island. Mm -hmm. um, when you really kind of cut those, those ties, you force yourself out of your comfort zone and you force yourself to get results. Because if you're always just side hustling and sitting with that safety net, you're not gonna have a big reason to go and make it big in business. You're always gonna be content with an income and a side hustle income. Um, you gotta jump for that, that tipping point. And absolutely everybody I've talked to that has made that transition, their income has probably doubled or tripled their side hustle income within the first couple of months of oh, yeah. making it happen. Mm -hmm. So, and then it just keeps going up from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's completely true. I mean, you guys know the story, but when I first quit my full-time job, I was so scared. I'm like, this is it, going homeless, you know, that's it. <laughs> but I really tripled my income completely on my own within the first three months, and people yep. couldn't believe that. And I'm like, guys, there's nothing that special about me. Yeah. Like, you guys can do this too. It wasn't so hard. But when you just cut out that middleman also, yep. uh, you know, that employer standing between you and the end client, there's nothing stopping you. You know, you have the same clients either, or the same uh, skills either way. And there's no reason that you can't do it, so. For sure. Sweet. Anything else you wanna add, share with the community? Um, I think you guys are way more capable than anything you could have ever dreamed of, think of. So I just did a, a two month Europe trip, uh, hung out with Lena out in Barcelona, awesome times, I'm sure you guys saw the pictures. But um, I, the year before that, let's see, about I want to say, this is actually right before I started the group. So about 16 months ago, um, I had to quit my gym membership because I couldn't afford it. And and I remember the, you know, at the gym, they're always, oh, you know, what can we do to keep you on? Can we give you a discount, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I just, I'm moving to Spain. <laughs> I, to I told them I'm moving to Spain. Leaving the country. Yeah, just, just yeah, I'm, I'm out. You can't yeah. keep me. I, di I didn't want to hear the, the rebuttals. They couldn't keep me on. I didn't want to pay for it. Um, couldn't pay for it 
And so I just told them I was moving to Spain. And then slightly after, a year after that, I get an invite for paid speaking gig to Spain. And I was like, that is ironic and awesome. Um, So especially as millennials, especially as go-getters, especially as ambitious people, you have so much opportunity to make cool stuff happen in a relatively short time frame. But you need to jump. You need to take that action. You need to find awesome people like Lena to learn from and, and just put the work in and... Make it real, guys. Dedication is the only thing that will get you there. Uh, taking risks and, and learning from the right people. Amen. Love it. Arnie, thanks so much for hanging out with Millennial Go-Getters today. If you guys have any questions, if you end up watching the replay, drop them down below. We are here for you. And with that said, have an awesome Thursday, guys. Woo-hoo! Yeah. <laughs> Bye.